Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of Foxy Box's Map Making with Sparks. So I'm back from Canada. I apologize for the uh the break in the video series. I just I didn't manage to get enough stuff recorded before I left. Um but I'm back now. I'm still reeling from the um from the time change, but uh, ready to go today with another episode, so glad to have you back, and my god, there were a lot of comments in the last uh, two videos, so thank you so much for those. So let me quickly go over some of the things that people have been saying, and the changes I plan to make based on them. So, in general, people seem to be in the agreement, in agreement that we should keep the platforms, but there have been a couple of suggestions for how we can make these a lot better. Uh, now, the first of these is that we should use a block model for the platform instead of falling sand. Um, so, first, uh, actually before I mention that, you notice that there's riding on this invisible line of barriers here. Somebody pointed out that I could use uh, Summon the Falling Sand with a uh, upward motion of 0.4 to, um, to cancel out the jittering effect. But um, that aside, we can actually use a, a uh, 3x3 block, block model to create platforms um, out of just one block. And then... Um, the really cool thing is in the 1.9 snapshot, we're currently still in 1.8.8 here, in the 1.9 snapshot there's a new mob called a shulker, which I've shown in a recent uh, showcase video I did, uh, and the interesting thing about this mob is that it um, it has a hitbox, uh, like a physical hitbox, so the shulker looks like a block, it's the same size as a regular block, and you can stand on it, uh, well, <laughs> anything but that, you can stand on it like this. Uh, and you can push against it and it blocks you, even though it's a, an entity, a mob. So it's kind of unique in that respect in having a hitbox of a, of a block. And it also snaps to a block, so it can't sit halfway between two blocks. But if you put it on an armor stand, you can teleport the armor stand and the shulker sits on top of it. And armor stands don't have to be centralized on a block. And um, the shulker will move with it, which means that we can get very exact edges to these platforms. So... What I'm planning to do for these um, platforms, when we move to 1.9, is we'll change this 3x3 up with a block model for the platform, which will be a lot easier to theme um, than all of this, um, because it's only one entity instead of nine, and then we will be using shulkers as the actual platform's hitbox to keep us from falling. So I think that's going to be awesome, and I think it'll really improve the look and feel of these platforms and make them a little bit less crazy. Um, but it means we can have different types of different textures of platform without having to have nine different blocks for every um, for every platform. We just have the nine for the shulker, which applies to every platform, and then like one for each following platform type, which is pretty cool, I think. Um, the shulkers may actually also allow us to make these platforms go up because before we had these, we have this solid hitbox being created using um, created using um, barriers, and the thing with this is that they can't not be a block, which means going up would have been very jerky and horrible. But with shulkers, I think we can make people rise pretty smoothly, so um, that's interesting. But I'm going to leave that for now um, and the, uh, talk a little bit about the the um, ground pound episode that we did previously. Now there's been some very... Did I get rid of the big pile of... I think I did, okay. Um, there's so... Somebody suggested, I think it was Kavolta, and I think maybe one other person came up with a much better way of doing the um, the falling detection system. Uh, it uses no armor stands or anything, and it's because I basically forgot um, that there is a fall distance tag. And the fall distance tag tells you how far you've fallen. Um, which means that for our our fall distance, we can we can just start counting up as soon as their fall distance isn't zero. So while I'm jumping, my fall distance is zero until I reach the peak of my jump. And as soon as I start going down, the fall distance tag changes from zero to something else. So we can use that instead of having to use detecting armor stands, um, which I think will be a lot more efficient and it will... I have no, I see no reason why the, the entity issue we're experiencing currently with these, which you can see here, would happen. So I think I'm going to try doing that first, um, and we're going to do that, and I don't know what else we'll do this episode yet, I have to keep, I have to see how long it takes me to do this next bit first, but uh, welcome back to Foxy Boxes, guys. 
Also, thank you to the two people who told me uh, that Jump Boost 255 cancels out the, um, the fall damage entirely, including the damage tick, which stops you taking fall damage, like the, the, um, the shaking effect that stops you jumping properly. Okay, so with surgical precision, I've removed these command blocks from down there in the velocity detection system, so we're getting rid of all this um, velocity stuff, and we're going to just basically, we're going to keep it up here in case we need to revert back to it, but for now, we're going to try changing it up. So I've left this stuff here, this is calculating um, whether you should be destroying the furnace or not, um, and de like displaying the velocity information which is just temporary anyway and then the in-air scoreboard here is here as well so let's um let's try and uh just work on the velocity thing so what i'm going to try to do is i'm going to go scoreboard players players set oh, i can't type today players set at e at a um, velocity zero if their, their fall distance score is zero. I believe it's a decimal. Let me just double check that. Fall distance has a capital F and it's a float type. So I'm going to try that. So it's going to set our velocity score to zero if our fall distance is zero. Um, and we're only going to do that if... No, I think that's fine. Let's set this to zero. Let's um, scoreboard objectives, set, dis set display, sidebar, velocity. I think somebody actually sent me the commands for this, come to think of it. So, uh, and then we will try just adding one as well here. So, scoreboard players add at a velocity one uh, if they are not on the ground. Score in air min equals one. Hmm. Sets our velocity to 1 as we jump, or as we rise, and then when we fall it goes up. That's pretty cool, that's two command blocks compared to all of that. Most of that is um, armor stand summoning, but uh, you know. I actually ran into a really cool trick for summoning uh, entities, uh, like large amounts of entities in squares, while working on my, um, my um, Shulker highlighter concept video. It's really cool, so you start with one armor stand, right? Let's say we want to do an 8x8. Eight eight. Start with an armor stand and you can summon, you can execute on that stand to summon a second stand. We're doing an 8x8 eight eight, so we're going to go four blocks out like that. And then you can, if they have the same name, you can then execute on all armor stands to summon an armor stand two blocks in front. So this one's going to do it here and this one's going to do it here. So now you've got four and then you can you can execute all, all of them to summon one block in front. So this one does it here, 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 that's eight. And then you can do the same in this thing in this direction. So you tell all of these to summon it four blocks in front, like so. Um, and then you do two in front of all of those. And basically you can generate a very large grid of entities without using very many commands. So like over here, we've got this mat of three by three armor stands being generated above the player, and this could probably be reduced a small amount, which is kind of cool, but we're not using that anymore anyway. So I think we've got a really nice velocity system um, here. It does set it to one. I'm not quite sure why. I'm guessing there's a moment, there's a moment when our in-air score is zero um, before our fall distance is zero, maybe? I'm not sure, but um, that's kind of cool. We may have to slightly adjust our um, break values because I think they break on two at the moment. Let's just quickly get on a furnace. It says zero six zero. That was three. Hmm. Okay, so we may have to slightly adjust our breaking system, but it's kind of cool. Oh, okay. Score in air equals zero. Score velocity min equals one. 
Uh, let's change this to two. Actually, no, let's change it to four because I think we were jumping onto it and it was three. So change that to, and then you'll notice that it's only doing it if we're on the ground. But over here, we set this to zero whether they're in the air or not. So we only want to do this if score in air equals zero. Uh, no. Um, min equals one, I think. Does that still work? It does, but it still sets it to zero when we land, which I don't think is going to work for us. Oh, it does. Fantastic. So we jump on it and it's fine. We bounce off it and it's all good. The jump boost doesn't seem to be working though. Um, they're supposed to be... It's supposed to give me jump boost. Um, if I bounce off one of these crates. Here it is. Execute at P score velocity min equals five, was it I, I used? I think it was five, four. I think it's actually six, but I'm just going with four. <coughs> so it's like I'm um, destroying it before I can jump off of it. Although I am bound, hmm, that's weird. I wonder if the um, if this jump boost is messing with it. I'm going to change that back to. Um, just zero so that it clears the jump boost effect and see if that fixes it. It does. Okay, so that's that's annoying. I think we need to clear the jump boost effect. And then... Hmm. We could try... Doing it here, I think this will work. Jump boost 100 and then 255 is the thing for. So this I think will work. Yeah, awesome, awesome. So thank you very much to Kavolta. I think someone else sent it to me as well, but they sent it in a, in a zip file. And I am lazy and don't like unzipping things. So. Uh, if you send it, send me something as a download, I will probably not look at it unless it's really easy for me to look at. Um, I prefer to have things explained in the comments generally or um, like commands typed out if there aren't too many of them. So that's actually kind of cool. I'm just going to quickly see how Kavolta did this because because I'm curious. Okay, so he did it in four commands and it looks like I kind of managed to do it with two, uh, which is awesome. I was not expecting... It. This is this is one of those things though. This is why I love sharing this, uh, and and this is a learning experience for me too. Because we just changed all of those command blocks up there to these two here, uh, and and that's thanks to thanks to you viewers. You have great suggestions, so I really thank you for participating in this series. Um, I I very much enjoy the things I learn from you guys. Um, so I guess that's kind of fixed the velocity issue, which is awesome. Um. We may have to make some adjustments to things like the ground power. Let me just quickly double check. We can still do cool things with this. Ready? Boink. Oh, I failed. I failed so bad. Like that. Okay. So we still have um, a couple of other things we need to look at with this system, though, come to think of it, because uh, we can land on the corner of a block without breaking it. So we need to think about that. And I believe last ground pound episode, I left the ground pound not quite functioning. Uh, I'm just going to adjust the ground pound values, uh, which I believe are somewhere because I think I need to change the velocities for them. So ground pound is a right click attack. Well, that's why it was working. It's because this command block is unpowered, uh, it is, isn't being executed on. Now it doesn't work again. Well, I'll have to find the right place for that jump boost uh, effect then. I think if I move it to here, it might be okay. Yeah, okay. So 
just to double check if I go to game mode zero I shouldn't take any damage cool okay uh, two if I click I get a little sploosh okay still want to change that attack in some way if I right click I get the dash effect and it um, ah damn this clock doesn't turn off I'm not sure why I have to manually power this to turn it off I have to look into that but I think the ground pound should still work if I go um, uh, scoreboard objective set display sidebar is pounding so jump right click hey it worked cool so that didn't actually require any real changing, at least not for now. I need to fix this clock though, it doesn't turn off. I think I need to change my velocity slightly higher because I don't want to, if I, I don't want this to happen. Like, um, I kind of just go through all of them without jumping, so I think I need a slightly higher velocity, because I'm getting a velocity of four each time there, but if I just jump off the top of one of these I get three so I probably want like six I guess we'll go with six so now when I land on this I should be able to break them like this but if I let go of space I just stop that's more like it so as an additional thing here then I would quite like it so that you can't like imagine if you had a um, a chasm like a, a hole in the ground and the only way to get across was on boxes like this uh, I actually ignoring the fact you can walk across imagine if you were on a slight incline like this right and the only way okay slight more inclined so the only way to get across is to jump on the boxes yeah you agree like this but you need to get back again for, for whatever reason right so um, the idea is that people would have to go like this and jump on every other box and fail to get over because that was too high of a jump. And then on the way back, use the remaining boxes to get back. I thought I thought I made people jump higher than that, actually. Um, that felt a little low. Um, jump boost three. Maybe? I feel like it used to be higher, a higher jump boost than that. Uh, anyway, the, the point is that currently you can, I think I'm not getting the jump boost, that's what it is. Currently, to get across this, what you could do is, uh, you could basically um, just do this. Oh, well I failed it there, but you could land on the very edge of the crate. so if you were really clever and you could just not smash any of them by by landing on the crates edge like I just did there so I can land in the gap between two crates only one will break and the other will support me I don't like that behavior so I guess what I'm trying to say in my in my uh, f f confused manner is that if you land when you land on the ground it shouldn't just be checking um, the block directly underneath you it should be checking I guess in a 4x4 four four like this um, so if I landed here it would break all of them um, but only if you were on the on the edge of the block so for example it shouldn't break any except this one unless I'm like I guess it would have to be like half a block across. If I'm half a block across, then I can be supported by this block, right? So however far across I am right now, <clears throat> which is, uh, well, let's have a look. That's my X changing. So this is one, four, three, three right now. And this is one, four, three, two. I can go as far as 
So if I'm over 0.7 across, I need to break the block to that side of me. And if I'm over negative point, like if I'm over, I guess, 0.2 or 0.3, I guess, is that is total, then I need to break the one on that side. So I guess I'm going to try that and also plug in my phone because it's complaining it's out of battery. So this is my current crate break command. I wonder if I can modify it to get the effect I want. So execute at all players with an inner score of zero and a velocity of at least six that detect a furnace under them to set block air. Okay, this should be modifiable, I think. So if we detect a furnace at plus naught point seven like that. I think it's 0 0.8 or 0 0.7. I'm not sure. I'll check that. 0 0.7. Then 0 0.7 blocks across from us. We destroy furnaces. I think that might be correct. So that's in the positive X, which is that way. So let me hop on here. So I'm going to, I'm going to break this crate. I'm going to go all the way across like this. So I'm right in as far as I can go place this and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump. Okay, now I didn't break that one. It's not... Hmm. Oh, I think I needed to... I think I needed to do it this way. So I'm all the way this way. Then I'm here, and then I go like that. Nope. Didn't work. What's, what's going wrong? Um... All players... Not an air velocity. Detect 0.7 furnace. Is 0.7 the wrong the wrong value? It's uh, It's not. Six. Is it 1.2 this way? It might be 1.2. Um, okay, that broke them both, but I think if I go over here, it's going to break them both as well. It does. So I need a smaller number than that. Let's try 0 0.9 and see if that works. No, it doesn't. Okay, so I'm on the very edge of that redstone block right now. If I broke this, I would just not quite fall. So I'm just like test for block 0.5. Do you know what it might be? Hang on. What if I put one here and here and I stand here? Is it going to break this one and this one but not the middle one? Nope, I have no idea what it is. Okay, I'm going to put the redstone block back. Uh, so I'm going to go... Test for block 0.5 minus 1 level with air. The block is furnace. Okay, so 0.5 um, to the positive x of where I'm standing is still the furnace. What about 0.6 also? 0.9. See, 0.9 blocks that way is not the furnace anymore. That is definitely the redstone block. So it looks like it is executing the, tech, the, the detect off me as if I was in the center of the block. Yeah, now it finds the redstone block. But which means I can stand here and run the same test. Damn. Hmm. Thing is, if I land in the middle of this block here, I don't want to break all four blocks around it. I only want to break the block that I'm on the closest edge to. I only want to break these two if I'm in the middle of them. Um, not. I only want it to happen if I'm on the very edge of the block. How do I do that? 
So I can tell there's air here. Um, if I'm on the edge of of this lip, if I'm uh, like here, I can tell there's air. So if the block isn't against a furnace, I could probably do it. So if I land on the edge of a of a block on the edge of the air, but not if there are two furnaces next to each other. It's not really anything I can do. Uh, unless it just breaks the one, but... Because it doesn't... The thing is, it doesn't catapult you, so you can just sit here quite happily. Hmm. Okay, what does this do? Whoop. Oh, that was nice. So what I'm doing is, if... Hang on. Hmm. That's interesting. That's kind of cool. Um, I need to test that. That may that may be not very nice, but I think yeah, it's breaking it even if even if I just land like here. If I'm over here, it still breaks it. That's no good. Ah, uh, I was trying to to detect air. I was executing on the player that detects air underneath him to execute on the player that detects a furnace in the positive X to set air one in the positive X. That's weird because I don't I had a furnace, not, not air there. Am I detecting the wrong space for air? No, it shouldn't be. I'm using minus one for the Y. That's that's weird. Okay, so I found the problem. Uh, as you can see, I've now um, fixed it, so I can't just land on the edge of this block anymore. If I'm jumping on the very edge, I still break it. Uh, it was an execution order thing, so what was happening before was basically, you know, I was jumping on this one and both were breaking. What was happening is, first it checked the block under me, it found a furnace, destroyed it, then it checked for air under me. Um, and then to the side, so it was breaking both. Uh, so I fixed that by basically putting the check for under me last. So now it does this, you go like that and then like that. Um, however, this does mean that I can still fall from a height and only break one like that. Uh, the other annoying thing is if I do this, then this happens. Ready? I mean, I mean this corner here, right? Watch. So that one's fine, and then boop, it breaks all four. Which is kind of annoying. Um, which is kind of not quite what I wanted. I think if I land on the edge of these two, like this, I want both of them to break. Um, I've at least fixed it so that you can't just land on the edge of one of these without breaking it. But it's not quite right still. Uh, because it takes two jumps to break this. I can still land on this lip and not break one of the boxes. So... Not quite what I was after, but I think I'm going to call it here for today's episode. Thank you very much as always for watching. Uh, next episode, I would like to try adding one or two new types of crate, because we're not going to go for just the one type. I'd like some uh, some other types of crate with different interactions. For example, a, a crate which um, lets you bounce higher but doesn't break, so you jump on it and it makes you bounce, but you can't break it from above without ground pounding it. Um, and you can still break it from the sides using the um, the dash and sploosh attacks, um, for example. Uh, but I don't know if people can think of any other cool crate designs, uh, like crate mechanics, then let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear them. And of course, uh, any modifications of the Foxy Box's texture, which can be found in the GitHub repository linked below um, to sort of denote that the box is different. Feel free to to play around with uh, modifying this texture a little bit. So thank you for all the lovely feedback. I'm really happy with the velocity changes. We've still got a lot of work to do with the with the braking. If anyone can tell me how to find out how far off, off the center of a block kind of thing I am, that'd be handy to know. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you in the next episode, guys. Uh, don't worry, the next episode will be out fairly shortly, like the next three or four days. I'm gonna be back on this now. I'm back from Canada. Um, so we should see more of this coming up.